Good morning and welcome. Um, we have our press conference today on the occasion of the meeting of the foreign ministers of the Visegrad four countries, the Western Balkan countries, and the Central European Initiative. Uh, in the framework of this meeting, now six of the foreign ministers are ready to answer your questions. Um, and before doing so, I would like to invite everybody at the table to give some short introductory remarks. So first of all, I would like to ask uh, the host today, Minister Janos Martoni, to give his introductory remarks. Uh, thank you. Uh, the agreement is that this time we all speak uh, English. So, uh, but if anyone uh, wants to use uh, his or her mother tongue, we might try to find a solution. So, uh, welcome. Uh, the meeting uh, is just going on. We'll continue in about 40, 45 minutes with a working lunch uh, with a new uh, special uh, guest, uh, Victoria Nuland, uh, uh, Assistant Secretary of State from the United States. Uh, so uh, this is now, as you see, a special format of uh, what we call uh, Visegrad uh, Plus. Uh, each time uh, we start uh, with the four of us, four uh, foreign ministers, uh, and then of course we continue uh, in an enlarged uh, circle. Uh, one might say in a kind of uh, concentric circles manner uh, and we always try to be flexible uh, and uh, inclusive. The formats are variable. Uh, this year uh, we have uh, special guests uh, such as uh, Turkey, uh, Austria. Uh, of course, we invited the uh, presidency the Foreign Minister of Lithuania, Linas Linkevicius, and uh, we also uh, have the honor and the pleasure uh, to have uh, Stefan Füle with us, uh, the Commissioner uh, for uh, Enlargement and uh, Neighborhood uh, uh, Policy. And, of course, we invited uh, the Western Balkans countries, uh, six uh, countries, all of them uh, so-called aspirants uh, for EU uh, membership. Uh, we all know that they are uh, on different stages uh, in uh, their process uh, of uh, integration, uh, but uh, they all have the same objective and the same aspiration. Uh, the purpose of this meeting is essentially, if I uh, had to sum it up uh, in one or two words, uh, is uh, uh, to uh, uh, land support uh, for the Western Balkan countries, for the aspirant countries, uh, in their efforts uh, to exceed uh, the uh, European uh, Union. Uh, we know that this is a complex and a long exercise, and uh, we believe uh, that uh, we four uh, countries uh, here uh, have a very special uh, responsibility, or indeed a historic mission. That is uh, what we uh, want to comply with, and that's why uh, it is already the fifth time that uh, we four organize this a meeting uh, together with the Western Balkan uh, countries. So the V4, uh, we very frequently say that, uh, have a lot of uh, common interests. We have a lot of uh, common objectives, uh, aspirations. We always say uh, we have lots uh, in common. Now, one of our common objectives and common interests is precisely uh, the successful conclusion 
uh, of the reunification of Europe, which we also call the enlargement uh, process. Uh, we have a fundamental strategic interest here, uh, but also uh, we have, uh, I would add, uh, a, a, a historic uh, mission and responsibility uh, as well. Uh, my good friend uh, Miroslav Rojcik said just a couple of uh, uh, minutes uh, before that V4 is perfectly placed uh, to support uh, the enlargement process and uh, uh, the achievement of the objectives of the, of the Western Balkan uh, countries. And uh, so we all agree on that. Uh, the basic question is uh, how uh, shall we do it? And uh, what, uh, what concrete steps and measures uh, can be taken uh, in order to promote uh, this process? Now, one thing is, of course, that uh, we uh, give full political support. Uh, this political support is reflected, uh, I would say, quite well uh, in our joint statement, uh, which we issued, uh, uh, or we issue now, uh, the language of this statement is quite clear. The V4 countries demonstrated their strong and continuous support for maintaining the momentum of the enlargement uh, process. Uh, we underlined uh, that uh, there is a mutual interest uh, uh, on both sides, that is on the EU side and the aspirant uh, uh, country side. Uh, uh, we pointed out uh, the stabilizing effect and, uh, and the, what is now called more and more the transformative power uh, uh, of uh, this uh, uh, enlargement process uh, uh, and so on. And we also uh, uh, refer to some uh, concrete questions uh, uh, with respect uh, to the enlargement process. Uh, I don't want to uh, go into all the details, but uh, for instance, uh, with respect uh, uh, to Serbia, we just say that uh, we don't think that the negotiation framework should include uh, so-called new conditions. Uh, so uh, even on these concrete issues, uh, we have uh, common uh, uh, positions. At the same time, we underline the importance uh, uh, of uh, the local elections in Kosovo on the 3rd of uh, November, that is in, uh, in two or three uh, days. And uh, we also called uh, the attention to the significance of the uh, participation, that is the turnout rate in that uh, election. Now, uh, more concretely, uh, the V4 uh, is of course in a good position uh, to share. Uh, our experiences of transition and uh, also of uh, European uh, integration. Uh, we also uh, underline the fact that regional cooperation is extremely important uh, in order to achieve uh, stability, prosperity uh, and uh, uh, genuine reconciliation uh, in the region. Uh, Quite humbly, we might also say, as we say it uh, now as well, that the Visegrad cooperation itself uh, could serve uh, as, a, as a model for regional cooperation. Uh, as you know, we started it more than 20 uh, years ago uh, in a very um, informal manner. Uh, no institutional structures have been established. Uh, then we uh, uh, established a, a fund, which we call the Visegrad Fund, Originally, the amount, if I uh, remember correctly, was 2 million euros. Each country contributed 500,000. It's not a huge amount of money, uh, especially if you compare it with the cohesion uh, policy resources of the European Union. But now it's, uh, it's eight, 8 million. It's just been increased by the prime ministers uh, a couple of weeks ago from 7 to 8 million. And of course, we have lots of interesting uh, and important uh, projects uh, to finance. Uh, relevant uh, for the people. Now, that's exactly what we propose, for instance, now for the Western Balkan countries. Establish a fund, we could be helpful, 
Uh, by the way, we also uh, finance uh, Western Balkans uh, uh, projects uh, from our fund, but the best would be to establish an own fund uh, of the best uh, Balkans country. We can, of course, supply the know-how and we can, uh, we can uh, give any other uh, assistance. Now, this is just an example. Uh, many other things uh, are also uh, going on. We develop now the V4 Western Balkans expert network on rule of law and fundamental rights uh, to promote the reform process. Uh, and also we provide technical assistance in the field of public administration and, and, and in other areas. So, uh, quite briefly, we want uh, to be uh, uh, helpful. Uh, we want to promote uh, the integration process uh, in that sense as well of the, of the, uh, of the Western Balkans uh, uh, countries. Uh, I'm not going to uh, get into the details of the enlargement process. Uh, maybe, of course, Commissioner could uh, tell us or tell you more about that. Uh, you probably know that uh, the uh, uh, progress report of the European Commission uh, came out a couple of days ago uh, with very, very positive uh, approach, uh, very objective assessments and some important recommendations which hopefully will be uh, followed uh, by the European uh, Council. But the most important thing is uh, that, uh, that the train is moving. Some might say that uh, it's not moving fast enough. Uh, some might say that it's moving too fast. Uh, but uh, for us, for the V4, the main point is that the train is, uh, the train is moving and we will uh, make all possible efforts also in the future uh, that uh, the reunification uh, process uh, should not be uh, stopped and it uh, should be taken uh, forward. Thank you. Minister Martoni, thank you very much. Now I would like to invite Mr. Miroslav Lojczak, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs of, uh, of, of the Slovak Republic, to give his introduction. Thank you very much and good morning. I'd like to say that this has been a very good meeting so far in all the formats we've held and I'm sure that this is the way how it's going to continue until the very end. Yesterday's Visegrad 4 meeting proved that our cooperation is in a very good shape and healthy. We have a number of projects on our agenda starting from energy and up to the joint uh, V4 bicycle race. My second point is that Visegrad 4 is well aware of its responsibility towards our neighborhood. Uh, let me remind you that Visegrad 4 is the only regional group in the European Union which holds annual meetings with our partners from the Western Balkans, in, always in the autumn, and uh, partners from the Eastern Partnership during the spring. And uh, this meeting today uh, has been organized at a very proper time. As Minister Martoni said, some two weeks after the, this year's Commission's progress re reports were published, and this uh, provides the very first opportunity for our partners from the region to give their assessment of the reports, and at the same time we are meeting some two months before the December Council, which will adopt conclusions for this country, so it helps us to advise them what needs to be done, what steps need to be undertaken to get the best possible conclusions in December. And, uh, my final point is, first of all, congratulations to uh, the hospitality and excellent organization of this meeting, and also congratulations to the very good, very proper selection of the PLUS segment. Uh, we are meeting now in the format with the countries which are helpful and like-minded uh, in discussing the issues which we have on, on, on our agenda, uh, the presidency, Turkey, Austria, and of course the Commission of Fila and later on we are going to be joined by the Euro European Union, so this creates a very favorable format for discussing these issues, and this helps us to make these meetings very productive. So once again, thank you very much, and congratulations. Thank you, Minister Lojczak. Now I would like to ask Mr. Jan Kohout, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Czech Republic, to give his introduction. Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to uh, extend my thanks to Janusz Martoni and to the Hungarian presidency of the V4. Um, they arranged a, a very important and a very productive meeting. Uh, 
uh, in the format of V4, as you were informed, which we had uh, last uh, night, and we had also a very important meeting with, with the Turkish Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, Ahmed Davutoglu, and today we have a much broader meeting. What is important is that the, the V4 is an important player not only on the European scene, but it's the perception of the V4 also from Japan, from other countries. It's, and we have the, the, the United States representative coming for that meeting. That the V4 is something which is very unique, not only in Central Europe, but also in Europe and on the international scene. And I am very glad for that. And uh, we have an ambitious program. Uh, for the V4 uh, under the Hungarian presidency and I am glad that we are able to implement it although it's so demanding. So uh, my congratulations and my thanks to Janusz Martoni for, for, for the leadership uh, during this period of time. The second is that uh, really we are uh, the V4, we have a special uh, value and uh, leverage, I would say, in the European affairs. We are at the cross crossroad of the, from Baltic states to, to Balkans, to Asia, from east to west. And we are quite aware of our, our responsibilities and uh, of our common interests. And those common interests are exactly as far as it concerns the enlargement are very well uh, expelled in the memorandum which we have just signed, which is uh, giving us the focus on the enlargement and the reunification of Europe as the one of the main goals of our cooperation, but not the only one. We are open to discussions with all the important players around the world and becoming a relevant partner. That's what is the another proof, this meeting is another proof of that growing importance and V4 and we hope that we will continue on this trajectory. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister. And now I am turning to Ms. Henryka Moschicka dendis Deputy State Secretary of the Polish Foreign Ministry, to offer her remarks. Thank you very much. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to be here. It's, I'll try to be brief because there's no much uh, uh, less for me to, to, to say. First of all, many thanks to the Hungarian uh, V4 presidency and to Janos Martini personally and his colleagues in the MFA for convening this meeting. I think it's a very, uh, very timely and useful event. And thank you for, uh, to the, uh, to the v, uh, Hungarian V4 presidency uh, for uh, offering a dynamic and, and very ambitious program for the, for the next year. The meeting in the format of V4 plus Western Balkans and Turkey are becoming a part of our practice, helping us not only to promote the V4 brand in terms of our regional cooperation, they also are a good format uh, making it possible for us to share our accession experiences. We try to share with countries of the, uh, of the Western Balkans and, uh, and with Turkey, our accession experience, inviting them to, to learn from our uh, uh, example uh, and not to commit or to, to do the same mistakes in the process, which I think is, is quite useful for the, for the partners. The Rule of Law and Fundamental Freedoms uh, Network, uh, which was initiated during the Polish before uh, presidency last year has been already mentioned. I think this is a very useful tool for partners from the Balkan countries in order to assist them in reforming their judicial systems in adopting the full set of uh, fundamental freedoms and, and human uh, rights in terms of, of its modern uh, uh, approach. We obviously I mean, uh, also are also uh, a good example for, uh, for regional cooperation which is uh, successful not only in terms of bringing the Central European region closer together but also in terms of uh, cooperating with third partners. So I'm, I'm glad that we'll have the chance to meet the uh, US uh, uh, Assistant Secretary, uh, Madame Nuland, later uh, for, the, uh, for the lunch. Let me also shortly mention a meeting we have had yesterday uh, uh, with Turkey where we discussed uh, 
very specifically the op cooperation uh, with uh, with Ankara on issues which I think are for for joint of joint interest like infrastructure like transport trade and energy and I think there is a lot of potential for further cooperation between the V4 and uh, uh, and Turkey as you know Poland and Turkey next year will celebrate the 600th uh, anniversary of our diplomatic relationship and we want this year 2014 to become also let's say a, a possibility to uh, to show our joint perspective on the relationship between uh, between our whole region and and Turkey thank you very much thank you very much and now I would like to ask Mr. Linas Lindkevicius, uh, Foreign, Minister, uh, Foreign Minister of Lithuania, to say a few words. Thank you very much. Let me also add my voice of thanks to Janos Martoni for splendid hospitality, fantastic place, very good substance, substantial discussions, and really special format. Uh, I'd like to say that uh, President Stach has great importance to the cooperation in the countries of Western Balkans, same as other partnerships, be it Southern Partnership or Eastern Partnership, the summit is approaching quite soon, next month in Vilnius, which is also will be very important. We believe that it has to do with the credi credibility of the process, uh, credibility of European project, and also openness of the process. And as Janusz said, uh, reintegration of Europe is, is one of the part of this, 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 this uh, process, but I would also add implementation of the vision of Europe whole and free. It's also very important. It's not by far not yet implemented. We have to do more. So we really need to focus on we all welcomed the enlargement package issues by, by the Commission, which is a very positive document, forward-leaning. But we need extra efforts, we need to focus on further progress in order to catch up the time, in order to grant the continuity and irreversibility of the processes. So knowing that enlargement fatigue sometimes overwhelming our, so to say, some, some so to say, thoughts in some, in some European capitals, it's not a big secret, but our task to prove that the process itself is also very important in implementing all reforms, again, in making the process successful and the result will come. So thank you once again for the hospitality and very interesting discussions. Thank you very much. And uh, last but not least, uh, I would like to ask Mr. Stefan Fülle, European Commissioner for uh, EU Enlargement and Neighborhood Policy, to give, may I rather call it his uh, summary now than introduction. Thank you. Well, there is definitely no enlargement fatigue uh, in this group. Uh, uh, and uh, to be uh, sincere, I have uh, missed to see it also uh, in the rest of, of member states. Uh, uh, but uh, being a guest uh, to this format, uh, I always uh, feel uh, very comfortable uh, in Visegrad uh, group or Visegrad uh, group plus uh, uh, format. So four uh, short remarks I would like to make. Uh, I'm extremely thankful to the Visegrad group and its uh, members uh, uh, helping the Commission to keep and strengthen the momentum uh, in the enlargement, particularly at the time. Uh, so shortly after the last uh, progress report. Point number two, I consider extremely important uh, uh, that at the time when the enlargement becomes more and more po political process, the Visegrad group uh, makes concrete contribution to A, strengthening the transformation power of the enlargement and B, helping the Commission to strengthen the credibility of the overall process. Point number three, uh, I value specifically the fact that whatever the messages uh, being shared uh, behind the table of Visegrad Group um, uh, and Western Balkan countries, it's then being conveyed in Brussels to other member states. And whatever is being discussed uh, in Brussels uh, um, in the framework uh, of the European Council for Inner First Council, General First Council, and other formats is then being conveyed through the Visegrad group uh, to the Western Balkan countries. Uh, uh, this two-way street uh, is extremely, extremely helpful. And point number four, a last uh, remark. Uh, in those meetings, I'm always looking not only for support, but also for inspiration and encouragement. Uh, those are very important things uh, because the enlargement, uh, despite being uh, uh, 
uh, marked as one of the most successful policies of the European Union, it's far from being on autopilot, and it needs uh, all the politics support. Uh, uh, it needs us to take seriously the concerns of the citizens of the EU, the concerns and uh, wishes of the citizens of the candidate and aspirant countries. Uh, it requires us to uh, politically support this process on a daily basis. It requires us to take the lessons learned from the previous waves very seriously. Thank you very much.